uh, before uh, we get into the markets, let's bring you that conversation with Irvin Jim, um, because we know that Durban may prove to be a battleground for unions in South Africa come the 1st of May, and that, of course, being Workers' Day. Irvin Jim uh, is on the line. Irvin, thank you so much for making the time to uh, get on to business tonight to give us an update. I want to talk to you about two things, the one of them, of course, being uh, uh, ESCOM and the other one being uh, Durban. Let's start off in Durban. Bring us up to speed as to what Etiguini Municipality is communicating to you. Well, we don't want to politicizing the issue, but unfortunately, we think that this issue has been politicized. It is everybody's, no, it is in everybody's knowledge and everybody knows that NUMSA as a union has been expelled from Kusatu or dismissed in Kusatu, and subsequent to that, about eight or seven unions decided to stay away from Kusatu. What was never thought of is that if NUMSA members are expelled to Kusa, these NUMSA members will always celebrate Thanksgiving. We never thought that people could want us, um, uh, could expect us not to organize celebrations for workers for May Day. We are not doing anything in a couple of provinces for our members. We have decided, because we are expelled, to use May Day to highlight the problems of workers, problems of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Same applies in Devon. We have planned a match that will highlight the plight of workers, the fact that we're facing plant closures. Mm. And uh, we followed the law. We went to the municipality. We were approved. Everything else has been done. But we are quite aware that there has been some lobbying, in particular from Kofatu leadership in that region, to try and stop the NUMSA march, because once NUMSA decided on the march, they then suggested that they want to go on a march as well. Yeah. And the metropolis were with us and saying, look, we have approved. And suddenly we are being told that, look, the march won't be approved because they smell some intimidation, violence from our march, which has not taken place, and we decided to take them to court tomorrow. So you're going to court tomorrow and no doubt you're going to be looking for a positive outcome. We're going to be keeping uh, that story alive. Let's talk about ESCOM uh, in particular. Are the, the, the contracted workers at ESCOM back at work? Well, workers unfortunately are still not back at work. What started as a march um, but ended up as a result of the reaction of ESCOM locking out workers being perceived to be a strike ended up being a strike in the sense that you would know that workers went on a march. There was an intention to go back to work. They were highlighting their problems. And ESCOM decided to close them out, to lock them out, decided to dismiss 1,700 without even calling a hearings for them. And we had to deal with that. We dealt with that when we thought we were over. Then workers said to us, listen, we can hear that you are resolving these issues. We will be back at work. But we went out on a march. Yeah. because we wanted ESCOM to address our issues. And therefore, before we go back to work, we want our issues to be addressed. And really, from when we sustained, we're calling on all CEOs of contractors and ESCOM to come to the table with speed. We should be able to resolve this issue so and, and put it behind us. Irvin, thank you so much uh, for making the time to join us. So the stage is set for Durban. And of course, uh, on the front of ESCOM, they're waiting uh, for ESCOM to come to the table before workers go back to work. That's Irvin Jim. He's the General Secretary of...